Coming up tonight on YCN News. Today marks the first anniversary of the Boston Marathon bombing. The second of two finalists for the principal's job at Claremont Stevens High School meets with community members. And a charter commission formed to review how Claremont, New Hampshire governs itself continues with its mission. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, Southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening, and welcome to this Tuesday edition of YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Motorists heading into and out of Brattleboro, Vermont should keep in mind work on Route 30 under the I-91 bridge. Route 30 will be closed through Friday. Expect to hear a lot of noise around the project as part of the Steeles Bridge structure will be sheared off, the Brattleboro Reformer reports. Project updates will be posted online at www.i91brattleboroughbridge.com. A new bridge, expected to be up sometime in fall 2015, is part of this ongoing road work. Northbound traffic on I-91 is being relocated onto the southbound bridge. Traffic will be reduced to one lane, north and south, until the new bridge is completed in 2015. Route 30 is expected to reopen by Easter Sunday. Meanwhile, a related project will reduce speeds on Route 30 to 40 miles per hour. Work on Route 30 will continue through spring 2016. Route 30 will be open, but only one lane will be open. Flaggers will be on the work site to monitor traffic flow north and south on this local roadway. YCN News will keep you informed of this project. Along with it being tax day, another anniversary is being marked today. A grim anniversary. It was one year ago today that a normally joyful event in Boston took a tragic turn. Survivors of the explosions near the Boston Marathon finish line gathered at that site today to remember the three people killed, plus an MIT police officer several days later, as police closed in on the two bombing suspects. New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan, U.S. Representative Anne McLean Custer, U.S. Senator Jean Shaheen, and one of Shaheen's political opponents, Jim Rubens, issued statements in support of the families and friends of the bombing victims. Concord, New Hampshire native Jeff Bauman is one of those victims. A photo of a shocked Bauman, his legs severely damaged, was one of the first images from the bombing. A Boston bystander helped Bauman into a wheelchair and pushed him alongside police. Next Monday, April 21st, runners will again gather west of Boston to begin the 26.2 mile race to the finish line at Copley Square. The second of two finalists for the principal's job at Claremont Stevens High School met with community members Monday afternoon. Patricia Barry spoke of her qualifications and interest in this position. Barry earned a bachelor's degree in English from the University of New Hampshire and a master's degree in educational leadership from Keene State. She now serves as the principal at Hillsborough during middle school. Jennifer Prylison is the other finalist. Current principal Frank Sprague is retiring in June from the post after two years. He is a longtime teacher and a graduate of Stevens. Sprague and his wife will focus their attentions on running a family business, the Hitching Post restaurant on Maple Avenue in Claremont. YCN News will follow who becomes principal at this high school. In an email today from SAU 6 Superintendent Middleton McGoodwin, the high school principal search committee has identified which candidate will be Stevens' next principal. This person will be introduced to the Claremont School Board Wednesday, soon after the start of the school board meeting at 6.30 p.m. McGoodwin says the principal search committee has agreed to not share the finalist's name with anyone until the Claremont School Board accepts her nomination tomorrow evening. The board meets in the John Goodrich Room of the Sugar River Valley Technical Center on South Street. The good folks at H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating Oils want you to know that their philosophy is simple. Wow them with our service. Their experts provide complete heating systems, air conditioning, and hot water heater installations at a fair price. They're specialists in radiant in-floor and hydro air systems. 
building a new home or just replacing an old system, call for an estimate. Wow and with service, it's the HR Clough and Kearsarge Heating Oil's way of doing business. Welcome back to YCN News, I'm Rose Spillman. Continuing with Claremont News, a charter commission formed to review how the city governs itself will continue its mission, Chairman George Cacavero told YCN News. Cacavero explains the purpose of the commission to YCN's John O'Connor. And Cacavero says a side effect of the commission's review of Claremont's charter. I guess my first question is, what is the Claremont Charter Commission, and and why, you know, what I, well, what are you doing? Well, initially the Charter Commission was founded. Um, it was put into place um, by the voters after a petition was filed, and the the but, whole and go ahead. But initially, what what year was that? Uh, this this last year. Okay, this, so, so we just started um, a couple of months ago now, and the intent was to amend the city charter to address issues that the voters seem to be having problems with. Uh, the main issue that came up, for example, was we had at one time when I was mayor and after that, we had committees that were there to assist the manager in running the city. And for some reason, one of the prior councils decided they didn't want that anymore. So that was one of the issues. So the intent was to take the existing charter, look at the areas that have caused problems or potentially could cause problems, and change them, or amend them, modify, whatever you want to call it. During that discussion, some of the people on the committee decided that we could also change the form of government. So the move was to convert from the current city form of government to a town government with town meetings. And the intent there was to give, they felt, to give the people more input in the budget process. I think a lot of this was um, prompted by the perception, at least in some areas of the community, that this council didn't listen to what they had to say. And I think one of the things that really pushed it over the edge was the community center. There were a lot of people who didn't feel that they are position against the community center was heard, even though they had public meetings. Tune in to YCN News to hear this full interview and learn more about the Commission's challenge. The interview will air beginning Monday night on YCN's news program. From the New Hampshire State House, the economic picture continues to improve, says Governor Maggie Hassan. A report showing that the state's unemployment rate dropped to two points below the national average prompts Hassan's remarks. More people are working as businesses are growing and adding jobs in New Hampshire, says Hassan. To keep the state moving forward, we must remain committed to addressing New Hampshire's challenges by working together on bipartisan solutions. Job growth must be encouraged so that the state's middle class can become stronger and more residents able to find success and prosper. On this warm yet rainy day, it's time to turn our thoughts to spring planting. YCN's Dan Carbonera met with Peter Kelleher of Agway in Walpole, New Hampshire, to learn more about this much welcome time of the year. For lawns, uh, New England soil is very acidic uh, because we have a, a lot of acid bedrock and we also have uh, a lot of acid rains. So we suggest to people that to test their soil for pH, uh, too low a pH. Uh, your, your lawns won't grow well because uh, uh, the fertilizers get tied up in the soil. So by raising the pH with lime, uh, it releases the uh, fertilizer to get into the plants and grow them faster and more lush. We're recommending a spring lawn fertilizer, and if you have crabgrass issues, uh, usually use uh, a, a fertilizer with crabgrass control. Lawn fertilization comes in four stages, uh, spring, early summer, late summer, and fall. The spring uh, fertilizer usually has a crabgrass control, which is a problem. It's a pre-emerge uh, weed killer in the fertilizer. And then the uh, early summer usually uh, is a fertilizer that takes care of uh, broadleaf weeds, such as dandelions. And then your late summer is usually for the, keeps it well green, green for uh, the hot summer. And then of course, the most important we think is the fall fertilization get rid of all the old winter debris, repair the damage to your lawns from snow plows and things like that, 
uh, and then lime and fertilizing lawn. There are many uh, forms of organic fertilizers, many companies that 20 years ago there was hardly anything. Now today uh, it's a very big business and uh, I'd say almost 40% um, of our customers are doing strictly organic. People like to know where their food products and where their plants are coming from. Seed starting, uh, growing it organically uh, is a very big uh, thing right now in the uh, uh, horticulture industry and uh, people like to raise their seeds, grow it organically and say we have organically grown produce. So that's a very big thing right now for uh, anybody in this business. People start sowing seeds anytime from early February right up through uh, mid-May and we have a full line of seeds and seed siding materials such as uh, trays, containers and soils. Thanks, Dan. It's nice to know spring is on its way. At the Barton Insurance Agency, you also get the best of both worlds, high-tech convenience and hometown service. For over 59 years, the Barton Insurance Agency has provided quality insurance services to the people and businesses of the Lake Sanapee and Kentucky regions. You will always deal with a real person and receive personal, professional service at a competitive price. That's what it means to be your local trusted choice agency. Experience the hometown difference of the Barton Insurance Agency. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Now Matt McDonald will have a look at our weather for the next five days and he'll take a look at some local college sports. Thanks Rose. Don't let today's clouds get you down. Tomorrow we're expecting sunny skies with temperatures dropping to a high of 41 degrees and lows in the 20s. Thursday will be partly cloudy with highs in the 50s and a low of 26 degrees. Friday temperatures will rise again to bring a high of 57 degrees with lows in the 30s. Saturday may bring a few rain showers with highs in the upper 50s and lows in the mid 30s. Sunday will be partly cloudy with a high of 57 degrees and lows in the mid 30s again. Here's a glimpse of the weather from our northeastern and national radar maps. Now let's see what's coming up on our community calendar. There are a lot of important meetings coming up tomorrow. In New Hampshire, the Danbury Selectman's meeting will be held at 6 p.m. The Charlestown Select Board will meet at 6.30 p.m. In Lebanon, the City Council will meet at 7 p.m. If you're in the Upper Valley tomorrow night, consider going to The Hop in Hanover for a piano performance by Gabriella Montero at 7 p.m. Remember, you can submit local events from your community by sending them to news at ycnnow.com. Turning to college sports, we have yesterday's results from Dartmouth's women's lacrosse. The Big Green battled it out with Hofstra. The final score was 9-8, with Dartmouth defeated in the end. A final shot on goal was taken by Dartmouth to tie the game, but was reflected by Hofstra. This was a close game, but a disappointing loss for Dartmouth. There are a few games that our regional colleges are participating in tomorrow. Colby Sawyer College is set to play Green Mountain in New London, New Hampshire at 4 p.m. in women's lacrosse. Also in women's lacrosse, UVM will play against Boston College down in Boston tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Now let's see last night's results from the Fisher Cats vs. New Britain game. The good news is that the Fisher Cats won the game 3-2. Hopefully they will continue to be too much for New Britain to handle Tuesday and Wednesday. 